Howdy folks, Timber Drifter here. Sitting on a log out in the woods, smoking some Nesmuk Plug. One of my favorite blends, named for the, uh, the famous Nesmuk. Uh, outdoor writer from the uh, century before the last one. <laughs> anyway, Brad Pipes and Kayak sent me a healthy dose. Um, it was a limited production tobacco in the first place, and I, I don't think it's 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 completely out of production now. So it's kind of a special deal, and uh, I, I pretty much only smoke it when I'm sitting on a log in the woods, specifically around a campfire, but no campfire today. But I have been out squirrel hunting today for a number of hours, <laughs> unsuccessfully. Uh, unsuccessfully as far as shooting squirrels to take home and eat, uh, but it's been an awesome day. This is a great piece of woods here, and I'm going to show it to you here in a moment. <clears throat> but it's uh, full of, you know, pretty mature hardwoods, and there's a small creek that's mostly dry and a, a pond. And it's just, it's perfect habitat for gray squirrel. Fox squirrel too, but there's a really good population of gray squirrel here. And gray squirrel are, at least the ones in this area, are fairly difficult to hunt. They, uh, they never stop moving. <laughs> so you have to train your sights on them and kind of follow along and wait for that one second pause when they look around. And I just never got that opportunity today. I was on several of them. But they never paused long enough for me to head shoot them. And that's how I shoot squirrels. I only shoot them in the head. Kill them right away. Don't ruin any meat. But I saw quite a few of them. A lot of them here are quite young. And I wasn't interested in those, the small ones. I'm only interested in the in the big old bushy tails. They're the ones that are worth eating. But, you know, they do this professionally, not get killed. <laughs> so they're pretty good at it. I don't think this area ever gets hunted. And I've hunted it twice, and the other two times I, I took a few squirrels out of here and I enjoyed them. Excellent hunts, good shots, good meat. But not the case today, so... So I, I saw one bobcat today. I also saw a bobcat last time I was in here. Uh, I got to watch that bobcat for quite a while. <clears throat> saw several deer, several armadillos, <laughs> and uh, one red squirrel in with the various grays. This pipe is just about out anyway. But it's been an awesome day. You may be able to hear it. Down that way there's a, an armadillo, you know, scratching around in the leaves, making a lot of noise. Actually, let's see if we can get close to him. I just love this area. It's a, it's a beautiful spot. It's it's border forest. It's fields around here, and this is the area in here is too steep to plow. So it's been left alone. Now he's running off. He saw me coming. So there's pretty mature hardwoods in here. Sycamores and white oaks. Ironwood, Osage Orange, 
There's willow here too. And cottonwood. Elm and hackberry. I think that about covers it. <laughs> and maple. There's maple too. Pretty diverse woodland, really, for around here. And the way that I hunt squirrel is I uh, I stock in as quietly as possible. And it's been raining the last few days, so. I was able to do that somewhat quietly. And then I find a nice spot to sit, usually in the shadow of a tree or with my back up against a lot of brush to break up my outline. And then I just sit quietly and wait for the squirrels to come out. They usually get comfortable with you being there after you know, 15, 20 minutes, if not more. And I just wait for uh, wait for them to get close enough for me to take a shot or to line up um, line up properly on a tree. So I'm not if I miss I'm not sending bullets out into the into the countryside. <laughs> Usually after I after I shoot and, and uh, get one, I'll leave it lay and I'll sit there, you know, another 20 minutes and wait for more to come out. And if that doesn't happen, I'll go pick up the squirrel and move, you know, 50, 60 yards on down, start all over again. With red squirrels, I can stock them. I can uh, quietly stock along and hunt. These gray squirrels. Any movement from you and they know where you are and they hide. But they forget you're there after about 15 or 20 minutes. Or they get comfortable, I'm not sure. Anyway, no squirrels were harmed today. So we're walking in the creek bed here. There's a lot of it was actually floods a few days ago, so a lot of this wood has been washed in here. First time I came back in here, you know, probably 20 years ago. This was all full of water, and the uh, beavers had it dammed up. Really lovely place. Squirrel season is almost over here, so I won't be hunting them anymore, but I have thoroughly enjoyed that activity while I've been in Kansas here, in Wisconsin, where I live anyway. We don't have fox squirrels, and the gray squirrels we have are, in my area, too few to hunt. So I hunt the little pine squirrels, and they don't taste all that good, <laughs> and they're quite small. Squirrel is my favorite animal to hunt, and other than grouse, uh, also my favorite meat. Squirrel and grouse. So 
but more than that, I just enjoy being out here. And it was great seeing that bobcat. I actually saw a bobcat yesterday also. We were driving down the road and we saw several white-tailed deer standing on either side of the road and a bobcat right in the middle of the road and the deer were all staring at the bobcat. Uh, and it was one of the tallest bobcats I've ever seen. We got a couple of pictures but they're from about 60 yards away so they're pretty much full focus and they're not that good. You can see what the animals are but they're not that good. The one I saw in here today was it passed within about 50 yards of me walking in a straight line like cats tend to do. Yeah, this area just, I don't know, and it brings me peace. Not that I was stressed out to begin with, but I spend a few hours sitting in the woods, not moving and watching and listening very closely become aware of every little movement every little leaf that has been snagged up in limbs for months and breaks loose in the light breeze and floats down to the ground the woods are full of spider web not webs but the trailing anyway full of gossamer strands basically that the light catches as the wind blows a little bit and it just kept I'd see it, look around, and it catches the edge of my vision. And uh, it got warm out today. After the rains of the last few days, and there's little beetles starting to come out of the ground, and you can hear them testing their wings under the leaves. Occasionally you'll see one crawl out and fly off. and The buzzing of one or two flies, and of course the armadillos mucking about in the leaves and the squirrels here and there. Gray squirrels are pretty quiet. Red squirrels sometimes sound like a herd of elephants running through the woods, but grays seem to slip about pretty quietly and flit here and there. Just uh, that sort of extreme awareness of everything around. I love that. It's a wonderful thing. It sets, sets my mind right like uh, very little else. So it's all fields that way. I've got quite a long walk back to the back to the vehicle. I didn't expect to be leaving the woods before dark today, but I'm going to go ahead and make my way out. I'm going to pause the video here for a moment. I'll be right back. Alright, I wanted to get a little distance away so you could see the difference in the woods there. So back behind there, is another field. That's just an old hedgerow. And I forgot to mention there's hickory, pecan, and walnut trees in there, which is why the squirrels are there. <laughs> those are the other hardwoods present in that stand. But those are mostly walnut and pecan trees. And then that big pecan tree and those two mark the entrance to that area right there. It seems fairly obvious, but I don't think very many people come back here because there's no road. It's just cornfields, and it kind of hooks around this hill here. That's the edge of the hill. So it's a, it's a lovely spot and not well-traveled. None of this is really well-traveled any time other than deer season anyway. Well, there you go. A little bit of nature, a little bit of pipe smoking. I really have quite a love for this land. Can't wait to get back to Wisconsin. 
I like it here too. Alright, take care folks. Get outside.